There's a difference between a Christian and a believer. Yeah. Yeah. A Christian means more to religion. But a believer has literally been rooted in Jesus. Who are the followers of Jesus? A believer. We are just the extension as a believer of what Jesus did when he was on earth. Because he said in his word, you will be able to do greater work. He said you will be able to do what I do. But even greater works. So he got us to a point now that we can move forward. Y'all mind if I come down today and talk to you again? Come on down. Hallelujah, Jesus. Because see, every so often Jesus came down on the mount and talked to the people. A lot of times we talk at the people, but we don't talk to the people. I need someone to have an NLT version. Because I may ask you again to read the scripture. Not that I can't read it, but I want all of us to be in working together in agreement. Amen? Amen. Glory. Of our faith. 
Jesus Christ, meaning that we walk in faith. We speak faith. We live faith. Hallelujah. But God showed himself that he's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. Hallelujah. I want to start off again today with the scripture. And there are going to be several scriptures again today. Still, Hebrews 11 and 1. Still, Hebrews 11 and 1. Now, we really can start right there. Now, faith is a substance of things. Hold for evidence of things not seen. It, 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 it really confirms invisible, invisible faith. Invisible faith. Hallelujah. And then we also want to release you to the atmosphere. Second Corinthians 5 and 7. Second Corinthians 5 and 7 lets us know it says, I walk by faith and not by sight. That means it's for me to walk it out. Not by sight, meaning it's not about these natural eyes. Come on now. It's about what perception, what do I see in the spirit? All by faith and not by sight. Father, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, God, I bless you for this part two of what you said and what you downloaded into me. My expectation is in God. My expectation comes from God. My expectations come from God. Father, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, God, I bless you. And I give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. God, as you release into the atmosphere, as you've already began, begun to move in the atmosphere, that your word has gone forth unchecked by any outside force. Allow these words to fall from off these lips of clay. And it will go out into the atmosphere, standing and believing that your word shall go forth. How do I see the word shall go forth and it shall accomplish what we please it to do? And it shall not return unto us, Lord. I seal this prayer by simply saying, Amen. 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 And Amen. Amen is agreement. We bless him. There are going to be some scriptures today again. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to his name. Glory.
God was establishing the fact that Jesus was there in the beginning before he was even in his mother's womb. He is the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. That means it confirms it's already done. And Pastor, as God is allowing me to know it, I thank God for the seasoned wisdom in the house. Amen. This is a spoken word, yes, meaning it's already been done. Yes, sir. Yes. He's not going to do it twice because Jesus has already done it. This confirms the fact this is new covenant. That means I'm already healed. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed coming out. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm a peculiar people. I'm a chosen generation. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a lender and not a barrier. What you talking about? This is covenant. We serve a covenant God. And the reason why we still have to stand on the Old Testament because it's still God's word. His word don't change. Hallelujah, Jesus. For God so loved the world 
that he gave us. Y'all know those gifts that you've been given for Christmas. He gave us the ultimate gift. That he gave us a gift. I give you life. And I give it to you more abundantly. Anybody ready for the overflow? You ready for your overflow in 2024? Go after God. I chop. No, matter of fact, I'm not. God, don't bet. Because you don't have to bet. But I invite you. According to Matthews 11 and 28, Holy Spirit, you're doing this. According to Matthews 11 and 28, he says, come. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heaven laden. He said, I, again, I will give you rest. It's an empty to my rest. <laughs> so you stayed up all night. Because you allow things to the things of the world to consume you. But the Bible declares he's a God that never slumber, no sleep. So why am I gonna stay up all night if it's not concerning God? Just, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this. Faith is already done. Already done. The Bible has everything that's right here. This is our inventory. Yes, sir. Anybody know anything about inventory? Yes, sir. You take inventory to see what you have left. You'll find out that you got more of this than what you thought you had. Yeah, yeah. You'll find out that you got more of that than what you're supposed to have. How many of you know that God will multiply? Oh, yeah. That's what he's working. Yes, sir. See, there's nothing that you do for the Lord that he will not reward you for. I'm just throwing off the cuff right now. Basic instructions before leaving earth. That's what this Bible means. B I B L E. Basic instructions before leaving earth. This is your blueprint. Why are you going all over the world trying to find something when it's already here? It's free. It's free. And yes, I, somebody can tell you something, but it feels better when you know it for yourself. That's why Timothy says, study to show yourself approved. Study. Show yourself approved. How bad do you need that miracle? See, a miracle is something that you can't do. A miracle is something impossible to you. You can't do it. But I invite you to yield to the Holy Ghost. Faith enables us to see how we use Jesus. Matter of fact, let me let me release this, but then I can go back to that. Faith is released by words, actions. We came from heaven. We came. Do y'all believe y'all came from heaven? Do you believe that you came from eternity? You think you you came from this world? No. This is not your home. That's a whole other subject right now. 
That's a whole other subject. I don't even go on the left field with that. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. We came from heaven, so did Jesus. That's what conceals the deal that we are joined heirs to Jesus. So we should be able to connect with Jesus. We should be able to receive the things that Jesus did on earth. Jesus never did anything without acknowledging his father. Jesus stepped from no time. There was no, there was no time in heaven. He stepped. Glory to God. <laughs> Thank you for the Spirit. God gave me this. He stepped into time. If you really know Jesus, he stepped into time, but he controlled time. How did he control time? See? Jesus wasn't concerned about time. He used faith. Let me give you an example. When Lazarus died, the disciples were, they were saying, oh, Martha and Mary, come. Because Jesus died. I mean, because Lazarus died. That's right, that's right. Jesus took his time. Sure because he knew he was the resurrector. Do yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Time didn't mean nothing to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus literally turned back the hands of time. He turned back the hands of time. There was somebody that was dealing with leprosy. Mm -hmm. And Jesus came in the midst of it. Jesus really didn't touch him. He spoke a word. Yeah, he used faith. Yeah. And his skin went back to baby skin. So Jesus turned. He, he manipulated times. He, he manipulated time. He put it like that. He manipulated time. Time don't have a chance. With Jesus. Amen. Time we have to kneel to Jesus. Yeah. 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 Time we have to kneel to Jesus. Yeah. God said every breath, every knee shall bow, yeah. and every tongue shall confess yeah. that Jesus is Lord. So Jesus literally made time yeah. bow yeah. to the faith in him. Yeah. The faith of God. So we establish the fact that Jesus has power over time. Hallelujah, Jesus. Stop getting yourself bent out of, all bent out of shape. But this this particular teaching and preaching from the expectation of my expectation comes from God. Part two lets us know. We have already identified why you gotta wait sometime. Mm -hmm. That was in part one. Because we are not fully where we need to be at according to the measure of faith that is given to every believer. Each one of us have a measure of faith. But we even realized on last Sunday that stop putting your trust and your faith in people. That's right. God wants you to himself. He's not going to share his glory. He's not going to share his glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Now we can get to the meat for this particular part. Glory to God. Faith enables us to see God when you can't see 
but you can't see him. He said he enables us to see God. Maybe we can't see him with the natural eye. But you gotta catch him in spirit because he says, those that serve me must serve me in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah, Jesus. In other words, you got to talk like God. You got to walk like God. You got to act like God. You still don't understand what you're saying. It's just like you're raising your children. Your children, they want to they wanna watch you. And they're going to do what you do. If you're being a good father or mother, that child is going to pick up the traits from you. So it's time for us to come up a little higher. We have been dealing with this level of faith for a long time. And here it is, we 2024. Don't you want more? Don't you want to see God more? Second mm. Corinthians 4 and 18. Second Corinthians 4 and 18 says, Wow. We look not at the things which are seen. We don't look at the things that seen. Hallelujah. That means with the natural eye. But at the things which are not seen. You say, well, I don't know what you're talking about. May God put you to sleep. Whatever time it is, we realize now, time is not a factor. Because man identified morning, day, night. God allowed that to happen like that because our mind not even where we can't even we can't even take you on God. So he had to show us something that we could understand. We could take in all of that at one time. So God had to make it simple for us. I know somebody saying about time. We need time. No, you don't. All you need is faith. Faith will move God. Time don't move God. Faith moves God. Hebrews 11 and 1 says now. Now. Whatever your noun is. Whether it's in the night, the day, whatever it may be. Now, it don't until it don't have nothing separating it. It says now. Glory to God. Now, once we receive these things, receive talk, God's talk, God, God walk, God's acts. Now that we receive this, now God can move. But if you don't, God cannot operate on the outside of faith. Because he is faith. He will never violate his own word. Jesus taught faith. So stop getting so caught up in time. Still see it now. Now, once you receive what God says, you can have it. Years ago, two years ago, I think, God showed me when Jesus was talking to the disciples, and it was like, when he was feeding the multitude, the disciples looked at it as, we, we need money to feed all these people. And, but Jesus is teaching them 
they use their faith as currency. What's currency? Money. Jesus was teaching them faith. See, faith is your money. Faith is your currency. Luke 19 and 31 says when Jesus sent the disciples into the city, he told them, go into the city. And you, there will be a coat. And the thing about Jesus, he's so specific. He says, a new coat yeah. that will be tied up. Yes, he said, I want you to lose him. And your bad disciple said, we ain't got no money. How are we going to just go on somebody else's property and lose something that's not even ours? In other words, they were saying, Jesus, we have money. <laughs> Jesus, I'm just telling you, he gave a command. He said, go. He just said, go. And he says, if anybody asks you, why you lose this brand new coat? See, something I've got to tell you, go to the car dealership. Because it don't make sense. You, you say, well, my credit messed up and I don't have no money. But God said, go. And the reason why we act like this is because we're not operating in faith. We're operating in timing. We're operating in our own intellect. But we're not fully sold out for God yet. Yeah, yeah. Notice I said, yeah. So I'm not condemning nobody. Amen? Amen. So Jesus said to the loose. If anybody asks you, <laughs> why are you loose this new code? He didn't just say any code. He said, this new code. He said, tell them. Tell them that the Lord, God, has need of it. When you speak God's word, time got to bow down. And faith rises up. Mm, glory to God. I'm never going to preach anything that has not happened to me. Glory to God. But look what this produces. When you walk like God, when you talk like God, when you act like God, joy comes on the scene. I was wondering why years ago God would say, happiness don't come before joy. Because see, we want to be happy, but how can you be happy when you're not full of joy? Amen. Still, you probably don't get it. Joy is what gives us strength to stand until the manifestation takes place. When you got joy in your spirit, you're not concerned about what somebody else is doing, but you're rejoicing with them. You're rejoicing with them because you know what? I'm next in line. It may not be the same way, but I'm next in line according to Mark chapter 10, verse 29 through 31. Let us know the first will be last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all you gotta do is turn around. The last will be fresh. What we don't get is because we're going through long suffering. See, that's part, that's another one of the fruit of the spirit. Joy is a fruit of the spirit. Long suffering is a, a fruit of the spirit. But what gets us in the midst of it, we're dealing with disappointment, setbacks. This is more than your disappointment is a setup for a come up. That means you're right on schedule. 
Anybody got their boarding pass yet? And I'm thinking about the train station. Yeah. All aboard. Yeah, All aboard. Yeah. That means I'm, I'm going through everything that God requires me to do. I'm releasing this word according to Isaiah 55 and 11. He said, my word should go out of my mouth. And it shall accomplish what I please it to do, and it shall not return it to me void. Matthew 4 and 4 says, Jesus, it is written. He already wrote your story. He already you gave that to me, young. You gave me that insight a long time ago, Brother Jeff Go. It is written. See, my story has been written. Your story has been written. He said, it is written that man should not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, that means he already talked about me. He already spoke about me. Hallelujah. He already confirmed that I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the beginning and not the ending. I can't help but what the doctor say. Because Isaiah 53 and 5 says, He was wounded, Jesus was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The just doctrine of my peace was upon him, and by his stripes, by his stripes, by his stripes, I'm healed. So, I don't claim sickness. I may have symptoms of something, but it ain't sickness. I'm not perceiving that. You can call me fool, you can call me crazy, you can say whatever you want to say. But I believe the word. You believe the word? Yes. Because I'm evidence. See, I'm not. I'm not concerned about what the doctor said about me. I'm only concerned about what Jesus said about me. What God said about me. He said, I'm the righteousness of him. Malachi 3, 10 and 11. It starts off by saying, to test me. Everybody so, oh, the church taking the preacher taking my money and, and he got this car and and you got that? God trying to help you be blessed. Don't worry about when you when God tell you to do something. And see, tithes is an obligation. Tithes and offering is an obligation. That's God's off the top. I'm going to tell you nothing. This is what the word is saying. He says, test me. He says, the Lord will come down to earth and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. That means I'm going to step in front of your battle. I'm going to step in front of your sickness because my word cannot come back void. My word has already been established that you already healed. Then he goes on to say, overflow. When you obey God, they got to be overflow. Don't look for your overflow to be like somebody else's overflow. Stop looking at people. Stop, for real, stop looking at people. You look at what the Joneses got. You don't know how the Joneses got that. Joneses got that. And even in the midst of that, the Joneses really, some of them could have been paying their tithes in their overflow. Some of them could have been playing seed. Oh, we want to harvest. God has checked me with that too. About five years ago, I put something on Facebook and said, I should reap my harvest. I should reap my harvest. So everybody's then start saying, I should reap my harvest. I should reap my harvest. You're not going to get no harvest unless you plant. So, in other words, you can say it till you get blue in the face. If you're 
God not put action to it. This is what it says. Seed without works is dead. You say, well, oh, that's some physical thing. But when you pay your tithes and your offering and you plant seed, you put faith on it. Even with your medicine, we talked about this last year as well. You got a bottle of ton Tylenol and you got a headache or whatever you got going on. You don't just take the Tylenol without putting faith. Say, Lord, I put faith in you that this will work for me. That's right. That's right. You got to utilize faith. This is what Jesus said. And this is what he did too. He wanted disciples to know. Sometimes we may have money on hand. But I really want y'all to utilize the faith. Because this is new covenant. All that walking Jesus did. We still don't believe. And it's okay because we'll get that. This is why God said you gotta to move to that next level of faith. Philippians 4 and 7 lets us know that you will get that peace. Because you say, I'm constantly living in chaos. Constantly living in chaos. And that, when you're living in chaos, then that's when that spirit of worry comes in. That's not a spirit of God. When you worry, Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, God said, I know the plans I have for you, plans of peace. You think God wants you to be worried? And trying to figure things out? When his word literally says, before you call, I will answer and show you great and mighty things that you have not seen. He said, you have not seen in the natural. That's right. That means what I'm going to do, do for you has got to be supernatural. Hallelujah, Jesus. Joy. Nehemiah 8 and 10. It talks about, he said, for the, for the joy of the Lord is my strength. He said, for the I don't put my joy in nothing else but God. He comes first. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. Of God. He is awesome. 
in his doings toward mankind. He turned the sea into dry land. They crossed the river on foot. There we rejoice in him. God is inviting you to faith. Come see the good works that has already been established through Jesus Christ. Your peace, your prosperity, your healing, love, all of this, God is inviting you. He's literally inviting you. He said, come see the works of God. That goes back to Matthew 11 and 28. Come. Come out from among them. Come out from 2023. Come. And see the works that has already been established for you. Let's go to Psalms 16 and 11. 16 and 11. God is setting this up. 16. And 7. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My affections also instruct me in the night season. Notice he said, he didn't say time. He said night season. So he's allowing you to understand it's not about time, but it's about the season. Glory to God. Mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Psalm 16, excuse me, and he allowed me to read that for, for whatever reason. I went to 7, but he wants us to stand on 11. You will make known to me the path of life. This is what it is. He allowed that nugget to come forth this now. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My affections are also in also instruct me in the night season. That's the verse 7. Okay, let's see what verse 11 is saying. 16 and 11. You will make known to me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. When you get in the presence of God, it's the fullness of of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures. Pleasures. Forevermore. Everlasting pleasures. Everlasting blessings. Everlasting promises. He says yours. He says yours. Glory to God. Mark 2, 1 through 7, when it talks about the man with parsley, parsley, parsley. It's a disease. And he needed to get to Jesus. But he couldn't do anything for himself. But there were some friends and some, I guess, other people in the area. They put him on, I guess, on a stretcher. And they took him to the house where Jesus was preaching. 
But the house was full with people. They couldn't get in. But the man needed to get to Jesus. Everybody need to get to Jesus. And you refuse to let any obstacle come in your way. I got to get to Jesus. No matter how bad it is. No matter what the opposition is. It's an opportunity for me to get into the presence of God. So what did they do? So the man on top of the house. So their faith was being activated too. It took the man on top of the house. And they began to tear part of the roof off. Because they I'm, I'm thinking that they wanted to see what Jesus was gonna do as well. And they lowered the man down in the middle, I can imagine, in the middle of the house. Mm, glory to God. Mark. This is what the end is saying. Mark. As they lowered the man down, Verse 5 says, when Jesus saw their faith, because see, Jesus recognized faith. God literally honors faith and he recognizes it as well. So sometimes God will put you in a position or a place that you can't do. He'll put you right there. But nobody can help you. This is what you call a miracle. A miracle is something that you can't do. A miracle is only God can do the miracle. And we can depend on people all day long. But you will never have that full experience with God unless you are. Your backs are against the wall. You're just like Moses at the Red Sea. You got the Egyptians behind you. You got the mountains on side of you. Then you got a Red Sea in front of you. That's what you should be saying. Matter of fact, God, how you gonna get me? Then you change and say, God, I know you got this. Because they made an effort. See, sometimes you gotta be persistent. You can't be so easy to give up. We talked about this last week. The disciples went out into the deep, went out into the water. They was fishing and toiling all night long, night after night, and couldn't bring nothing in. But when Jesus gives you instructions, so go out into the deep. See, the deep is unfamiliar territory. The deep is the impossible things. And Jesus saw their faith. He said it to them. He said it to the sick of the parsley son. That sin. Thy sin be forgiven thee. Thy sin be forgiven thee. So whatever you, the devil tried to bring you around and say, oh, you did this, this is why it's not going to happen. Jesus said, thy sin has been forgiven. In other words, go your way, you heal. But we sit here because that old flesh will tell you, oh, God ain't going to do this for you. It's not going to happen. But when you begin to follow these traits, talking like God, walking like God, acting like God, it has to come to pass. Evidence. 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 I'm laughing with you. I'm too rejoicing with you. Joy in my spirit. Evidence. It's not even. So this was considered to be crazy faith. That's what Mark chapter 2, verse 1 through 6, 1 through 7. That was that crazy faith. What is crazy faith? I no longer see 
the things of the world the way I used to see them. I see faith moving. Yes, sir. I see love flowing. Yes. I see my breakthroughs coming to pass. Yes. I see the miracles manifesting. Yes. I see love on the horizon. Yes. Yes. Because I, I got tunnel vision and I got my eyes on something. I'm keeping my eyes in front of me. I'm forgetting about those things behind me. Whatever happened yesterday, last thing yesterday. Whatever's around me, that's not my burden. That's what the Lord said. Your burden is not my burden, neither my battle. You see, God didn't create me or you to carry a burden. He's the burden bearer. He's the yoke destroyer. Telling you today, go clean your trunk out, and I literally did that. <laughs> but it was a parable in that. The physical trunk, how did all this stuff get in there? Because you're holding on. Come on, come on. You're trying to hold on to something that really don't have nothing in it. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're trying to hold on to some armor that ain't nothing really within it. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm holding on to broken pieces. I know I'm see it because somebody, I'm holding on to something that somebody gave me, but they try to take it back from me. You can have it because something brand new is on the horizon. I want you to know that we've been made to do for a
me, Brian, it reminded me if you want to throw in something, if you want to throw in something, if you want to throw in something, go in a birthday man.
And creeds of faith, faith is the God kind of faith. Y'all heard that? The God kind of faith. I think God's thing for our lives is to live by faith. And in order to live by faith, we got to break us off of ourselves. Can I have it overnight? Yes, it can. It can't happen overnight. And God told me it's time at the time. I can do it for you overnight. Well, what would you learn? What would you learn if you if, if you just if I just granted you everything at one time? Not saying it's it's impossible because it's not impossible for God because He is God. He's the Creator. Of heaven and earth. Mm. My expectations are from God. We try to defy. Some of you have been trying to defy as well.
can't see. And I'm learning so much about seeing. Can't see. You can't be God. I'm serious. You cannot be God given this life. It's it has become a lifestyle.